All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Small Data SF, and I'm super excited to be here with uh, Glober, who's the CEO and co-founder of Torso. Thanks for having me, Robert. It's a great pleasure having you around here. Such a pleasure to have you, and definitely looking forward to learning more about you know Torso, learning more about why you're here at Small Data SF. Uh, so, can you tell us a little about first of all yourself, Torso, and why you here at Small Data SF? Absolutely. So we are uh, one of the co-organizers of this conference together with MotherDuck and Olama. Uh, and look, Turso essentially is, the story of the company is that we started with a fork of SQLite. We saw this need, like SQLite is a database that everybody uses, everybody knows. It's been with us for 20 plus years. Exactly. It runs everywhere. Your, your phone is probably has like 10,000 SQLite databases on it. Your toaster runs SQLite. But we saw like a yearning on the market for like something like SQLite that yep. could do a little bit more. Mother Duck is an example of that being very successful. They have their own database that claims to be like the SQLite of analytics. But look, what about the transactional workloads? What are the, no the web workloads? We saw more and more developers trying to run SQLite in production. And we figured that a fork would be the way to bring those features uh, into the fold. Turso is essentially a managed service, right. a serverless offering of a database based on SQLite that you can access over the wire, replicate, and do all sorts of things with that. That's awesome. And uh, what was the idea behind it? What's, what was the motivation to start Torso? Because I know you know you've 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 started working with a lot of enterprises, uh, and uh, I'm kind of curious to learn a little about what was the you know the reason to start Torso. Well, it's as I said, I mean, we saw this this blazing need in the market right. of something, like we, we, I was in the database business before already on a big data company, a database called Scylla DB, usually tackling, designed to tackle at least these cases on the petabytes uh, with lots of data, millions of requests per second. And we, we were doing this for eight years, my co-founder and I, right, Becca being my co-founder. And like what we noticed is that there are use cases that get there. There's many use cases there. Like we had customers on the petabytes. Yep. But the reality is that the big data systems are very complicated. And they have to be very complicated because you're dealing with, with, with uh, interesting failure modes and a cluster of many nodes. You're dealing with all of that. But we had customers. I had this one customer that I'll never forget with 50 gigabytes of data. Hmm. And 50 gigabytes of data fits anywhere. <laughs> right? Just True. That, now, that they were... They still wanted to use the database, but then we, we start asking the question of why, right? And and we saw like a, a, we we were big fans of SQLite. Uh, we we know what SQLite can do. We were using SQLite for a lot of our projects. We just saw the need, and we figured, hey, like, do I think the world needs a database right. that is as SQLite, but can run your web workloads that is available over the wire. That can yeah. that can one of the things that we do very well, for example, uh, you can get your database and then you replicate the database into your mobile device, and you keep that mobile device database in sync. Right. All of that, so can you put a mobile device, uh, can you put SQLite on a mobile device? Yes, people yes. do this all the time. Uh, can you keep it in sync? That's one of the things that you need to run it for production, right? So all of those things that we call it like the quality of life improvements, the things that you need to actually run this in production, we, we just saw like the world needs this, so let's build it. It's not there, we'll, we'll figure it out. I love it. I love how you have kind of, you know, obviously found a way to, you know, help the uh, community, maybe the smaller, small size community, like the small data community, right? But I'm kind of also curious to well, learn. The community is pretty big. I mean, we talk about yeah. small data. Yeah. Uh, and you know, answering our initial question, why are we here at Small Data? Why we decided to co-organize this day, this conference with uh, with Mother Duck? I think we share the same understanding. This understanding that look that. Big data is real, I'm not claiming that it's not, but like, big data can also be seen as a collection of a lot of small data. Mm. Like, creating a SQLite database takes microseconds, it's just creating a file. Right. One of the use cases that we do better at is creating multi-tenant applications. So I'm gonna give you, like, on our $29 a month plan, you can create 10,000 databases, right? Wow. Uh, so we have customers with 60,000 databases, getting getting close to 100,000 databases. And you can do like per user database. When you put this all of this data together, it actually 
can be quite big. Big, but true. you're operating on on the unit, right? On on the on the smaller smaller piece pieces. Data. And there are many advantages of doing so. Right, most of the web workloads that we see out there, they've got 10 gigabytes, they've got 20 gigabytes. Wow. Uh, and they consider it quite big. So there is, <laughs> there is a, and, and it's, those are very valuable workloads. Yeah, because the value exactly. of the workload doesn't come from the amount of data, it comes from the kind of data that you have there. Right. So there is a lot of uh, opportunity and, and, and there's a lot of uh, desire we see from having databases that focus on the problem of like, make the small unit work really well. Uh, so we're committed to, to doing this and that's why we're here. Love it. I think uh, y'all have kind of found the gap as well. And I know on this topic, I also want to learn a little about, uh, I saw you have a talk today. So I'm kind of curious to know a little about your talk. What are you talking about? And uh, uh, you know, just, just tell us more about uh, what do you feel about you know, the conference as well. So I just explained to you how we do multi-tenancy. My right. talk's going to be about that. We're going to focus okay. on why would you want to do multi-tenancy, why uh, databases like SQLite are uniquely well positioned to serve this architecture, uh, and then the consequences of that. So it's going to be a 20-minute talk. We're going to be exploring uh, all, all, all things multi-tenant. Turso is not a database that is exclusively for multi-tenancy. Yes. Lots of our users come because they want a simple SQLite database that costs very little and, and works very well. Uh, but the, the multi-tenant architectures are things that excite me a lot and we're going to be talking. In part because, again, when you get those small databases that work very well and are self-contained and you put them together, you can actually get to big data, mm. right? So this is something that is very close to my heart. We're very passionate about it, and um, I hope to see you all in the talk. I love it, and uh, I'm excited for it. I'm going to attend that session for sure, and uh, I'm kind of also excited to, or maybe curious to learn if small data is the next big thing. Do you think so? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's as I said, I, mean, just, uh, small, I think small data is the default at the end of the day. Uh, that's what most people have. Right. And the question is, if we can build big data as a collection of small data units, then absolutely, because like, now, now you have this flexibility of like you start small, you compose those units, and there's no ceiling to that. Right. So the, absolutely, I think this is the way of the future. That's awesome. Uh, first of all, you know, obviously, thanks for sharing all the details. Uh, I'm kind of uh, curious, and I'm pretty sure our audience would be curious to learn more about Terso. Where can they reach out? Is you know, obviously the website, and also where can they reach out to you, Glober, and learn more about, you know, various things that you're working in this space. Awesome, so Turso is at turso.tech. Uh, okay. So that's our website that you see right here. Nice. Uh, if you are uh, in the Small Data Conference or watching your show, you can go to tour.so, so that's our short link, tur.so slash small. You're gonna get uh, one month free of our scalar plan and above. Oh wow! With with, with that uh, with that link, uh, I'm on X uh, almost much more than I should. My <laughs> wife keeps telling me get out of there, go be happy. You know, oh. you know, you know just. Uh, but I'm there. You know what can I do? So feel free to reach out, and, and I'm, I'm always I'm always around, always available. That's awesome. Thanks uh, a lot for doing this. Thanks for sharing all the details. I'm looking forward to your talk today. All the best for that and. Uh, all the best to Torso. Absolutely. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone.